play the character but if you want to use it that way because i do it for some of my characters mm -hmm. um i i i have an eight intelligence monk he does all of his decisions by flipping a coin yep that's what i'm gonna do like it's not that he's an idiot it's just that he's uh uh he's a uh, uh La tamora is his goddess the mm -hmm. lady luck, the luck so yeah. He, mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah. that's how i make decisions yeah. now is based yeah. off a coin. And by and by the way it's a two-headed coin, so it's heads on both sides, but he doesn't know that. Just a little bit of a schtup. Like, it's not a big deal. It doesn't break anything. But oh, that's great. Yeah. It's just I, fun to kind of play into that a little bit. Mm -hmm. No one's saying you have to, but you can. Right. In terms of... right, you definitely can. Yeah. If I'm okay with repeating some of the, the dead horse things, like, I know going back to, like, Critical Role is an example. It's, like, cliche. But um, there's one instance where if you watched it in the season not makes an attempt at something to make a, a persuasion or a deception roll and rolls a zero, you know, kind of thing. But the way that the character portrayed it, they were trying their darndest and the way that the DM described, without getting any spoilers, the way that the DM described it, it made it appear that some outside element happened to the character, which caused it to fail. It wasn't like, you know, oh, we just don't believe you talking or what you're saying is not, you know, plausible. It's just that circumstances happened outside of your mm. knowledge or whereabouts right which led to your thing being a complete like nope not gonna happen mm. so I, I love that with the dm too it's like your stats don't have to define you but they can certainly help make a story happen where you try to do something and something around you makes it so that your attempt goes mm -hmm. bottoms up yeah i've run into this situation where i was running through curse of Strahd and I had an eight charisma. We tried to, you know, rally the town to get to support us. And it's, you know, the DM described it as, it's not that your words weren't convincing or that you just don't know how to talk to people. It's just those people were already so downtrodden that really nothing you say could have stirred them to action. You know, it's not your fault. You said the right things. You had a werewolf's head in your hands. You know, they just, there was nothing you could do yeah, stats, stats on the sheets can inform the roleplay. Like, you know, Kyle was saying they're good things to base ideas off of, but they should never decide it for you. Right. Awesome. Well, those are our top five pet peeves. I hope everybody had a good time. Um, we're going to transition now into focusing on the chat. <coughs> so if you guys have anything you guys want to talk about, any questions for us, comments, concerns, tips, anything like that, um, we're going to be focusing on you guys and we're going to be talking about the things you want to talk about um, The ideas may come up slowly if they do then we'll just Talk about whatever we want to talk about, but we'll try to focus on the questions as they pop up I want to see every one of Kyle's players ask him embarrassing questions <laughs> oh, yes. Give us some dirt on Kyle yeah. <laughs> Focus on Kyle <laughs> yes he will not hurt you and have repercussions in your game no do not fear the power of the dm will... <laughs> it is only illusion <laughs> they all have back they all have backup characters anyway so yeah, there you go <laughs> all right totally so fun. shadow asks how did you come up with your method of character creation um it was a hosh posh of concepts i was trying to come up with like just new things um, that I hadn't seen or heard of before. Um, but I also had collected um, from Roll20 other people who were interested in building a world and maybe not be the headliner for it. And collected a group. Um, it varied. I mean, it started off at like four or five, but then it grew to 12 and then kind of died down. Um, but at the very beginning, it was also getting the feedback from those other developers on them also trying to think of new, interesting ways of doing um, character creation because um, we knew we were looking for people with experience um, who were ambitious to grow their experience and hopefully we're all trying to make a career out of this obviously um, but if not we still want to have a good time with other experienced players so it was a combination of my own ideas but also heavily relying on my devs um, just kind of give a shout out to all of you guys out there um, who've been helping with this um, None of this stuff could have happened if it wasn't for my dev team. Um, they are the, the real power behind the screen. They don't always get screen time, 
um, like Kayla doing all the divinity stuff, she came up with some awesome stuff. And the players actually haven't got to experience the fullness of the game because we're still doing session zero. We're probably doing the most session zeros out of any campaign ever. But <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it's a it'll, prequel, man. It's a yeah, prequel. Cool. Um, it'll definitely pay off in the long run, and it's also given us a lot of time to work out stuff for the stream and for um, giveaway, like all the other stuff that comes with streaming. Um, a, a campaign because this is a first for me for doing it on Twitch and everything like that. Um, so yeah, that's that one. Yeah. Before we, I just want to go to King of Sparta's question. I know sure. Kyle already yeah. touched on it, but um, yeah, Roll Twenty is definitely a good resource. But I mean, the way I found my first campaign is just hit up your local game stores. Go, you know, see if there's a comic shop around that does it. See if there's a hobby shop around that's hosting games um check out basically any site like meetup.com depending on your city might have some um if you're in a larger city it'll be a lot easier um if you're in a smaller city it'll be a little harder i'll look up DD adventurers league see if there's a group around you um is this yeah, for just, the there's any tips for complete noob how to find a first game for DD? is that yes. a question okay sorry yeah no, and okay. i didn't yeah, want to read the question people over sorry yeah said any tips for a complete noob on how to find a first game for D D. And I want to make sure Spaz knows we're not skipping over him. But it's yeah, okay. um we don't care about Spaz. He's a dev, yeah, he's okay. Yeah. Spaz is a dev. <laughs> oh, well then <laughs> never mind. Yeah. Uh something just, mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, this, well, those are like, just hit the ground and check as many comic stores or game shops nearby as you can is a good start. I think it's a good thing to establish too if you want to play like physical tabletop where you're rolling real dice with miniatures and maps or do you want to play digitally like on Roll20 and there's other platforms out there too but we use Roll20 so that's the one we talk about. Um, so if you're wanting to play on Roll20 it doesn't have to be on a streamed one. I definitely don't recommend a streamed one for the learning curve. Um, but if you jump onto Roll20 um, you can go into the forums and they, there are people who will make posts. Hey, I you know teaching new players you know from scratch i definitely recommend those because if a dm is structuring his game to teach that is the perfect place for you to be in and just surround yourself with other people and don't be afraid of getting into as many of those as you can because um, D, D is one of the best games i've ever played and it's definitely worth the, the time investment for learning does anybody else have anything on that one? <coughs> i was yeah just a piggyback um locally like steven was saying another thing that i've actually seen um uh, meetup's a good one i i have subscribed to like the DD meetup just to kind of see you know how long it gets posted like every week that there's like comic shop has one for live eventually this thing and also interestingly enough if you just search like on facebook like just local DD, just see what that brings up like i i found that there's a local uh DD page just for like my city of like people looking for players or people doing this or talking about this or you know you could probably like you said the larger cities i'm sure it's even bigger than that so you can make new friends you know that's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, that's what it's all about man meet new friends and stuff and uh I, I, obviously rule 20 is uh, one of the easier ones and right. uh, facebook facebook networking all that stuff just reach out so we got a question from neff um i'm curious what house rules if any you guys might have um I'll let you guys answer that. Um, what house rules do we have that's unique, maybe, to other games? <clears throat> Whoever bring this snacks dies last. <laughs> <laughs> I would never die. <laughs> uh, I, I think I the one thing I will say about house rules I find more fun is the fact that they should be something that you implement if you feel like it's important for the, uh, the characters or the story. Like, there are times when I've had um, moments where, like, a person would like to play a Dragonborn, but the Dragonborn breath weapon is kind of something that gets, like, barely used or seen because it's usually not that um, frequently taken over in action. It's like, why would I want right. to do that? So right. I will then sometimes say, okay, for, you know, house rule, bonus action. It doesn't really take that long for you to just kind of go, <gasps> I'm fighting! <clears throat> and there it goes out. Mm. Kind of thing. I can easily believe that. Other ones that I've done before have been... Uh, 
<clears throat> for other um, more um, like experienced players, they like to have a challenge, so I'll throw in some more like house rules that make it different, more difficult. Like one of the house rules I um, do, and what I'm going to be doing for experienced players is long rests do not heal you to full health. Uh, long rests are basically like the idea that you know you get everything back at max. But mm -hmm. in this one, it's like you are not a Superman, you're not um, Wolverine. You don't just regenerate overnight. So it was the idea that if you took a long rest, you just got all your hit dice back. Mm. So every time you were healing, it was just based on the luck of the roll. And sometimes you could get back to full, but sometimes you might start the next day with like a little bit too much of a, oh, that that one stabbed a little deeper <clears> than <throat> I thought it might. I mm. had to kind of walk around the next day with a little bit of like, ouch, kind of thing. Mm. So there was like, it all depends. I think it's great for you to use it for each custom game or player, whenever you feel like it would make the game more fun. I, uh, I mean, whether you want to call it a house rule or not, but like a house mechanic, um, again, because it's the first that I've ever seen it or done it or experienced it, was going back to the ability score modifications. Like, I thought that was really cool. I, again, if you want to call it a house rule or whatever. Did, but you mean? Yeah, that we okay. did. Yes, correct. For this, oh, yeah, that was great. It was, it was for us, right? Yeah. Uh, what's the, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. adding negative modifiers. Uh, no, you're good. Yeah, so like... Just going through, I mean, it was not only cool aspect to add to the game, but also, again, that was when we were really, you know, trying to add that little bit of fleshing out of the characters, too. So, you know, why, what, how is Finley at acrobatics? Tell me good or bad. And we had to be, we had to be honest about it. Be mm -hmm. like, this is why I'm bad. Right. <laughs> and then explain it. Like, and if we could determine get... if it was a four, six, or an eight for negative. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and just the same on the flip side, too. So, again, never experienced that before, but I really like it. Um, and that that's probably the, one of the more... When, when House Rules was mentioned, that was the first thing that popped into my mind because it actually did a couple of things uh, in terms of different chapters of our, our characters. I thought it was pretty cool. Definitely unique. Anything else? Kayla! Yeah, house rules, Kayla, because you DM all the time. <laughs> I don't DM all the time. Um, I mean, I, I'm still relatively new to DMing, to D&D &D in general. I've only been playing for like a couple of years, and I'm not the kind of person that likes to tweak rules because anytime I try to tweak rules, it never ends up working out very well. <laughs> so, um, I... I will adapt certain house rules that I have heard that I liked. Like I, I do like the idea of like doing the ability modifiers. Um, I think that's really cool. I had never heard of that until, uh, yeah, until this time. So, and then I, I, I never, I always kind of hated the fact that like players get all their health back. Um, and I had never thought about doing it that way, Andrew. So oh, I'm yeah. going to try to adapt. Try it. All your players are like, no, Andrew, why? My <laughs> it's fun. You'll have more fun. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but, no, no, no big homebrew. Okay. I mistook the question. I thought it was just Hoda. I thought Hoda. it was too, but it's I, I know it was individuals, but that's okay. That's all right. Do I really have, don't have it. For Hoda, home, um, home rules that you guys noticed was different than what you've normally seen? Uh, well, I mean, there are some there that we kind of get told about a little bit later, or are known about, but... The what? They, they'll change, like, uh, like it's usually like whatever a DM calls on something for this world, which we don't know yet until we encounter it, which could be a house rule. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Which, again, if it progresses the story and makes sense for the story, do it. Um, Shadow asks, what classes have you all not played as yet? Clerics. <laughs> we have a shocking the cleric. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Kyle, you can't hate on a class that you haven't played. Yeah, okay? I do don't. That. I don't hate on clerics. I'm just saying. You said personally. a lot about clerics tonight. <laughs> I do not see myself playing one, and what's crazy, one of the big reasons is that I can't see myself being the healer specifically. Not that clerics have to be, but 90 percent of the time. Interestingly enough, in my Monday game, I'm a shepherd druid, and one of the cool things you could do is throw down a unicorn and heal fucking everybody. So it's yeah. like, but it's the only time I do it. It's like one specific time. It's not every time I'm healing everyone under God's <sighs> creed here. But just go, um, just go I, don't know, I don't know what it is. <laughs> What's just that? Go war, just go war or forge cleric, and then you don't heal anybody. 
You just hit the shit out of everybody. <laughs> I don't know. It's the only. One, I think it's the only one that I haven't played. I think it's the only one left, if I'm not mistaken. But there's my answer. You could go. I've never played a wizard. I had to think for a second. I haven't. It's either. just none of, none of the classes or none of Shut the like schools ever grabbed me enough that I could make a class or, or make a character around it. Although we talked about it before, if there's if there's a one shot, I might have to roll up Muscle Wizard. <laughs> that's one inch strength. Go Mountain Dwarf, so you get full plate, learn shield, and then just cast Fist. Muscle. Cast yeah, Fist. Muscle. Muscle Wizard. <laughs> now I remember when that was a thing. I do. Oh gosh. Rogues and Barbarians are my two favorites, so it's. It's rare that I actually make characters because I'm usually running games now. Um, but back when I was playing, um, Barbarians and Rogues are my favorite. So all the rest. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have played all the classes, but I have not played all the archetypes. Mm. So, I mean, I know the classes, but I've never, for instance, I've not played a... Um, God, like I've not played all the, the warlock patrons. There's so many, so freaking many. I haven't done all of them. Um, some of the homebrew stuff I still haven't experienced. I haven't done the uh, the theologian wizard or the technomancer wizard. I haven't tried those, and I haven't done any of the um, the even more crazy homebrewed stuff that got thrown. Like the Kayla played one that I only just like read up on, but never played, which is the artificer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean I, I haven't too. played that one. But it's technically, I think, a, a hungry ish one or somewhere outside. Yeah, the but at that, yeah, but yeah, expanded. I think it's UA. Yeah, I think it's out there. Yeah, it's UA. Yeah, I think it's out there. It's all uh, oh, right. It's a UA. UA yeah, stuff. Yeah. UA. yeah, yeah. I think it was expanded on that too, where it's artificer, um, the uh, the one with the uh, construct, and then the uh, thunderbugger one, right? So it used There's to be two. two yeah, two yeah. artifacts. A uh, question that we skipped over was from Spaz, so we'll come back to that since we haven't got any more. Um, how do you feel about multiclassing and the pros that come with them? Of course, Spaz would ask that. He's a <laughs> Spaz is our mechanics, monsters, maps developer. Um, he loves mechanical. Challenges. I've just given him the title Evil Genius. Yeah. I think that kind of covers everything. <laughs> Uh, is he though? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, goody. <laughs> yes, I look yes. forward to if, his creation. Yes. Up. <laughs> if you had heard some of the conversations we devs have had, evil genius. <laughs> yeah. Nice. If he had his full reign of doing whatever he wanted to, you guys would be in fetal positions crying. <laughs> oh, I like the challenges. Uh, uh, now I feel like it's like if any kind of shit happens. Man. Yeah, yeah. He's, just he's like the bounce for me because I'm like, let's just let them have fun. And he's like, they need to die. So we find a really good, <laughs> good middle ground. He balances me really well. I, I, feel, I feel like it's like you brought up on the screen. This encounter was brought to you by Spazio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. This TPK was brought to you by yes, Spazio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so well, multiclassing. How do you guys feel about that? And the pros. Mixed emotions. I don't know. It, it can go go on uh it can go either way um when i dm i don't make this a hard and fast rule but just to make sure people aren't power gamer or min maxing i always i'll ask him how and why would your character multi-class into this are you just trying to abuse the mechanics or do you have a reason to do it um like kyle brought up there's there's gray areas where you can go good or bad with it um if there's a spot in the group you're trying to fill, that can be a great reason to multi-class, or maybe you're just, you're satisfied with where your class is taking you, and now you just want to expand your skill list a little bit. <clears throat> there can be great reasons for it, um, but I mean, I don't know. I've never multi-classed. I'm not the biggest fan of the concept, but that's me. I think it's definitely an underutilized option in D, D most people will just run straight through um and then another aspect of why we don't see it very often is the nature of this game campaigns don't normally go on as long as the players want to either players drop out people stop showing up 
the DM has life changes, so groups kind of fizzle out. So most players, I would say, um, don't get past a, a level threshold where multi-classing um, is uh, feasible or makes sense. Um, just for my own viewing of other games, um, I try to have mine go very long so people can have that option. Um, but you do end up losing out on the top end of, of certain classes. Um, so the, the last few levels is usually where you get like the level 9 spell. So, you know, like the really good stuff, the reason why you were doing it is to become a demigod, you know. Um, so it takes a lot of knowledge of what you get at what levels. But some classes, the last couple levels, aren't actually that beneficial to where you get to 16, 17. Um, you kind of got the best stuff you can get. So the last few levels, you could get something else. So would you get it earlier to benefit then, or would you get it later to where, well, being a level three rogue on top of being a wizard, like, is that really going to benefit you at, at a level 20 campaign? But campaigns don't normally get to that point, in my experience. Um, some do, but it's very far and few between. Um, does anybody else have anything else? We have other questions. Um, I would just say, again, it's the gray area. Um, uh, a great place for multi-classing is a murder hobo, especially if you just want to min-max like Steven was saying about, I just want to see what this combination will yield in mm. terms of the mechanics of it. Um, In-game with like more of an actual like heavy campaign kind of thing, um, I, I think it can actually make for some really cool uh, storyline stuff um, if it's something that you know the player and the DM really talk about, and it's the intention of it, like what Steven was saying. You know, uh, is the intention because you not only want to do this thing to your character to make them a little better, but also for the story, or are you just try to just do it to be a little better because of numbers and things? Like, I think. I would be a little bit more on the open concept conversation if it is mm -hmm. both not so much just well because this combo works great mm -hmm. not to say that that's not fun to do I mean that's right. half the fun of character creation in the first place is seeing what kind of combos are fun to do um, I just like to have a little bit more of that explanation and then we can tie it in like we can make that a thing that happens and, <clears> and really and, and give the DM that trust to bring it into the fold like just just a real quick example uh my wednesday game um my one character uh wanted to uh multi into wizard and we talked about it and it's it was the it was a story and a mechanic mm. i was like cool do you how do you do you do you have an idea of how you want that to happen or do you want me to be a little creative with it he said no man just surprise me with it so he didn't even know what it was coming which is kind of fun right and when I presented it to him in the form of like this really cool wizard book that he found in a store that like the pages moved and the cover moved and everything and it was a level up period so now he can multi-class into it like I just think that's a little bit cooler than just saying all right you're a level six thing you could you could do that now if you want to like mm -hmm. just just for the mechanics of it but mm -hmm. if you don't have that conversation <clears throat> it's a little bit like eh. <laughs> I, yeah yeah it can be a fun way to let your DM more include you in the story, like Kyle was saying. That's the route one of my characters is going. He's a ranger, and now he's multi-classing into cleric. I promise I had that planned before I met you, Kyle, so not just more cleric talk to make you mad. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's been a big part of you know his of our story so far since we transitioned from Curse of Strahd to um, a homebrew setting. And that's been his big, like, Cursor Strati completed what he needed to do. Now he's got to find something else to do with his life. And he's joining the clergy because mm -hmm. complicated backstory stuff that's mm -hmm. not in the purview of this show. So I won't bore you with it. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it can be a good character moment if you play it right. Let's do our last question, and we'll make it brief. Um, how hard has currency management been in past campaigns? Um, I'm going to not answer that one just for the sake of time but if you guys want to say anything on that go ahead it's my least favorite part of any campaign agreed uh, yeah it's boring uh, and terrible but it's necessary and you have to do it and i hate it 
currency management in terms of like players trying to buy stuff, DMs divvying it out for doing stuff. Like I'm not following the question specifically. I'm assuming they're meaning like just keeping track of it and making sure that players are either not being too endorsed with riches or being um, like a, a overly concerned about gold, maybe. Economy management, no, that's hard. Oh no, that was fast. That was, that was what, I, what I've done before is um, a lot of the times, one of the great things to do is to give players options where you make it real, where you say that, you know, there's, there's copper, silver, and gold. And when you find a treasure trove, you might find 6,000 silver, but carrying that much is going to be near impossible. And when you translate it to gold, it just only goes down to 600. So there's that to kind of give you like incentives of you need to trade off. But another thing that I like to do is if the world is based on a true economy, you can kind of gauge the players a little bit to what you have. Like if there's a surplus of wealth or a surplus of something that came along, then prices will kind of get raised up. So what I like to do is I just write down on a piece of paper all the gold reward that they've accumulated in total. And then I'll just minus away if I if I say they spent something. So if I say, oh, this is the gold kind of thing. So I always know their party average. So I know like the parties has like maybe 10,000 gold. If there's an item out there that they really want and I'm like, it's too early to get it right now or it should be more expensive, I'm gonna bump it to 50,000. It's like the, the codex might say that it's a 20,000 gold, but I'm just gonna say it's very far out right. of your range. Right. It's not likely for you to get it. So it's good to do it in clumps rather than try to worry about the individual player <laughs> and how they got their own gold and what they're saving for specifically. If you can keep it in a large general pocket, it's a little easier to kind of understand. And then don't forget, you are the DM. Mm -hmm. You can make it up whatever price you want so you can control the player and the world economy. I, I absolutely despise currency. And I'll usually come up, no matter what the setting is, no matter what the, I'll come up with some different mechanic to make it not important. I'll still have it there, but it's not going to be the main driving force for getting shit for your character. Some people really like that. The stat crunching and the economy and fish are worth this. And you can trade it at this post for this much. You know, like some people really enjoy that. Me personally, it's a drag and it's just going to slow me down. There's so many other things I could spend my time doing. So I'll have other, like, like, uh, what do we call it? Like, landmark moments where things will happen you know like for you to get the shit and we'll just throw in some gold if you want to buy adventuring gear you're like i want to buy a net or caltrops or you know like that's what that's for for how i like to run games not necessarily how you're going to get your plus two sword like if you're wanting to get a plus two sword well then just let me know and i'll try to incorporate you able to acquire one for a good reason um, all right so does anybody have anything else about currency? Nope. Um, not really. Yes. No? Okay. Just, yeah, no. All right, we'll take our last five-minute break, and when we come back, we will start doing giveaways. So we'll start off with Hoda points, and we'll put some, some stipulations out, see if we can get some stimulation in the chat, and we might give away some Hoda tokens as well. Um, but we will be right back. Thanks for sticking with us. Welcome back. So everyone who's hey. here is probably here for the raffle so <laughs> let's go ahead and start it and um for players and devs who are in there too nice. might as well jump in um so we're gonna do a thousand point um hold a, po a thousand hold a points raffle um so i will open it right meow so it's yeah. exclamation point raffle you only need to do it once multiple entries will not get you in more than once um so go ahead and do that now Sean's new character, Tabaxi Rogue, who can only say, right meow? Right, right meow. meow. <laughs> I look like a Not jumping from tree to tree on nimbly bimbly. Yeah, <laughs> drinking milk from a salsa. <laughs> All right, we got shadows in. Exclamation point raffle will get you in. King of Sparta, welcome to the raffle. King of Sparta. That's the thing we should talk right about. Meow. Roll 20 character mancer for character creation. Oh, that. I've had uh, I've had a lot of problems doing that. Um, yeah, no, it's it's not. It's a good idea. I just my problem is like they expect or want people to buy the books on there as well, but it's like I just bought Xanathar's Guide for fifty bucks for a physical copy. I don't want to have to pay another fifty just so I don't have to copy and paste it when I can find it for free somewhere else. Mm. Yeah. And then a lot of times if you put in the custom like backgrounds or character subclasses or whatever, it doesn't 
transfer it over when the sheet's done. So then you got to redo it in it. I think that's um, I think that is yeah, something that Rule Twenty though has to kind of be careful about because I think where it says it's like the public domain for D and D is like a little so-so. Like some things that they come out recently, yeah, the XRD. To. Yeah. Like okay. they could the the fair domain of the the D and D kind of general is what they've got. I don't think they can do the new releases, and that's why like UA stuff and uh, Xanathars aren't being put on Rule Twenty. Because they don't technically have like a license agreement, maybe. I think that's well. I know you like you can buy the books and add those to the character mancer, but yeah, they don't have the straight up license agreements. I think they're not like an official wizard's partner, something like that. Yeah. So yeah, they can't like compendium it or like have it as a, a default option. Sort of yeah, thing. unless you pay them more money and buy the book again. Yeah. Which is understandable. I mean, it's fair. Roll twenty is a business. They want to make money. I don't blame them, but I don't know. I wish there was a way you could buy your book at a local game store and then come back and just yeah. put in a code. Yeah, I mean, like, well, if Roll Twenty was probably picked up or taken over by them, that would certainly be a thing that they do at that point. Yeah. Eventually, they'll two start minutes doing left for the giveaway. And they'll just like give you codes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like all the current uh games today now are shared accounts. Yeah. Shadow makes a good point. D D Beyond's character creator is really good. This this will soon happen when Amazon takes it over. And they Amazon takes over everything. Yep. Yeah. D D Beyond's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, Dolphin said old twenty for Oh wait. Oh we got a oh, Um so bad. Said, but Ryan. Roll 20 Ooh. only has the acolyte background. Why one, but not the others in the player handbook? It's true. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, so that's stupid. the only, only background one? it yeah. has. <laughs> Unless by the PHP, then it brings you everything else. That's what I'm saying. Like, mm -hmm. it's just. Mm. Oh, Ryan's, Ryan's here. He said he just got done running a session. Um, Ryan. Ryan, you got one minute, 20 seconds into the raffle if you want to jump in there. We got four people in. Well, he starts a heist instead. <laughs> right into it. Brian likes I'm doing high. I've noticed. Oh, there, there it goes. Go. All right, we got one minute left. Um, if we can get one subscriber, um, we will do a Hoda tokens giveaway after this raffle. Um, but if yeah. not, then we'll just we'll just end it with the Hoda points. So, if anybody's watching and is following, hasn't subscribed yet, um, some benefits of subscribing. Um, you get a custom emote, or you get, yeah, a emote based on which tier you go in at. Um, so, let's see, we got a normal, a uh, silver, and a gold. So I'll put that in the chat so you can see it. And then, let's see. And then you also get a, a custom icon that'll be on your name whenever you message in the chat. You also will get 500 loyalty points. Loyalty points are for, like, when... The actual campaign's going. You can use loyalty points to purchase um, potions or inspiration points for the players while it's going on. Thanks for the cheers, Ryan. All right, eight seconds left. Oh, and you also have a better right, chance subscriber. of winning in the mini games. Oh, we got a subscriber. Perfect. We'll do a token giveaway. Ooh. Thanks, Shadow. Hey. All right, Shadow. With that prime again, Amazon. That's awesome. Perfect. Yep. Thank you. Is. Name is Shadow Kills. But All are. right. The giveaway <laughs> is closed. We will pick a winner. Kyle won! Kyle! Hey. <laughs> I would like to... Uh, I was waiting to see you after the tech. Can I give my points to Shadow? Sure. Can we do that? Yeah. Yeah, we can definitely right. do that. So Shadow, type um, exclamation Hoda points. So everybody can see how much you got. And then we'll do it afterwards as well. Um, let's see. Currency... Yeah. Good job, Steven. I gotta find him. I've got so many people on this thing. This list. What if I did? What can I do? Can I split it between Steven and Shadow? Can I sure. do 500? Yeah, let's I'll do, do that. Shadow is at 161. Steven freaking crushed it. So we'll go Shadow. You're awesome, Steven, bro. 661. And then who was the other person? DJ Stevens. <laughs> DJ Steve Source. DJ. The name I made in like eighth grade and have just stuck with since. I mean, it rocks, so just keep it. 
Yeah. Come on, keep All it right. on, man. We'll give you 500 points. Awesome. I had one guy message me once, like, hey, dude, I found your DJ page. Your stuff's good. I'm like, the hell are you talking about? <laughs> it's like, I don't make music. This is a dumb thing I made when I was 12 because I thought dinosaurs and DJs were cool. All right. I'm opening um, a giveaway for 10 Hoda tokens. So it's what these are here. And I will mail them out tomorrow. Um, all of our players have them, and we did our first giveaway yesterday. Um, yeah, Caleb is mad. I don't have you. any. So I'm gonna open that up. Um, if you are a player or dev, don't enter into this uh, nope, giveaway. Nope, nope, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, so exclamation point raffle. So we got DJ. Steve is in. Why not? Yeah, go for me. I didn't enter the raffle because I thought I wasn't allowed, but... No, yeah, yeah that, that's right. Right. No, you're fine. <laughs> so we got four. We got DJ Steve. We got the Dolphin, Shadow, and King of Sparta. Oh, Dolphin Jesus. I love it. <laughs> it's interesting to have as a you're player. You're spirit, Ryan. <laughs> All right, we'll leave this open for another minute or so. When uh, Dolphin Jesus rolled up his backup character, they give you those random names in uh, Roll20, and his was Emo Thought, and it was so hilarious we kept it. Emo Just... Thought. Like emo it. Thought. <laughs> and we laughed. I was like, you could change. He's like, no, it's this mm -hmm. now. <laughs> it, it is me. You are this now. So remember when you weren't, but now you are. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close it. So we got four of them in there. I wish everybody luck. Here we Good luck. Go. Good luck, everyone. Good luck. One and four. Pick winner. King of Sparta. Congratulations. Oh, nice. Congrats. Congrats. Won. Ten Hoda tokens. So, um, King Sparta, uh, if you send me a PM through Twitch, um, give me your mailing address. No one else will see it, um, and then I'll get those sent out for you tomorrow. So, congrats. Yay. Congrats. Yay. Oops. Congratulations. Awesome. So jealous. <laughs> <laughs> you have tokens Caleb does. I'll, just, I'll send them you know, up for you, to Caleb, that. tomorrow, too. Because <laughs> you haven't gotten yet. Um, so, yeah. King of Sparta, send me a PM real quick. I'll keep the stream going until, until you do that. So, let's... Well, while we're waiting, I can't stress it enough, man. I had a great time. First, first episode of RDI it was a great, great uh, conversation, and uh, time flies when you're having fun. And uh, again, can't stress enough the uh, the kudos to Stephen Knoll hopping in and hanging out with us. Like that's like oh man, just jumped right in yeah, like he's been here the whole time, man. Like great conversation. And thanks for hanging out with us. And thanks for everyone for watching. Yep. Yeah. Thank just, you. Guys. He likes D and D. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Um, King of Sparta, send me a message. Yes, it is. Okay. Cool. So I got him going. Um, does anybody have any <laughs> anything they want to plug or anything? No. no. I don't. I don't. I don't stream anything. Okay. I don't have anything. Okay. I'm just. Okay. Um, I'll just shameless plug uh, Aureli again one more time, who made the uh, pictures for us. Uh, uh, Litchie's workshop on Facebook. Uh, our, so our, oh, there you go. Our chivies. Uh, yes. So, so I, I, I feel great ear ear about those. And uh, again, I'll, I'll, we'll always just say thank you to everyone who watches us on Tuesdays and on RDIs for this and PvP coming up. Mm -hmm. Just so many things, you guys. And uh, <laughs> Adventure, Buddy, Adventure Buddy has Dragon Heist coming up on Monday. So we're rock and rolling. And uh, appreciate everyone coming along as we're rock and rolling together. So it's pretty cool. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.